Come on, say. Oh, feet, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never. One more time. Even when I don't see it. When I don't. Even when I don't feel it. You never stop. One more time, even then, even when I don't see you working, even when I don't see you working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never. Come on, say, even when I don't, even when I don't see you working, even when I don't feel it, you working, you never stop, you never stop working. That situation that you trap you you faced it today, he is making a way because he's a way maker. Even when you don't see it, he's working. He is at work every day. He is at work every day, huh? Even when you don't see it, he is working. He never stop working. Come on, declare in my life, oh Lord. I know that you're making a way. I know you're making a way. Where there is no way. I can see it. I can feel it. Making a way where there is no way. Where there is no way. You make. Where there is no way. You are making a way. Because you were way make. Come on, declare it tonight. Today. Come on, declare. I know that you are here. And you are moving all on. You are making a way, Lord, where there is no way. I know you are making a way where there is no way, oh Lord. I, tr I trust in you. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you today. For my mom, I trust in you. For my dad, I trust in you. For my family, come on, declare for your family. I trust in you, Lord. I know that you were making a way. We will see it. I know we will see it. I know we will see it. Thank you for your presence, oh Lord. Let it fade Cause you rain Let it follow me We win your praise Let it rain Cause you rain To follow Fuck! 
won't see. Bye bye. Lord, 
Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, For whoever calls out the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. What I like about this verse, it says whoever. It doesn't specify any specific category of people that have the right to call out the name of the Lord. It says whoever, meaning that wherever you are in this place, you are qualified to call out the name of the Lord. And now when it says, call out the name of the Lord, I like this verb, this verb because it has many meanings. It has several meanings. But one of them is that you are calling the name of the, God, of, of the Lord. You are calling the name that matches your circumstances. Hallelujah. You know, when the Lord introduced himself to Moses, he said, I am that I am, meaning that I can be whatever you need me to be, whenever you need me to be. Hallelujah. And so right this morning, you, when you call out the name of the Lord, you are going to call him according to the name that matches your circumstance. Hallelujah. Do you need a healer? You are going to call him Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals me. You need peace. You are going to call him Jehovah of a shalom, the one that gives me peace. Do you need him to make a way for you? You are going to call him way maker. You need him to make a miracle for you. You are going to call him miracle worker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then what calling out the Lord also means, it means that you are reminding him of his promises over your life. You know, the Bible is filled with promises for you. And then where, when you, wherever you are here, I'm sure there's a specific word, a specific promise that is resting upon your life. And knowing that the Lord is not a man that he shall lie, not a son of man that he shall repent. This morning, when you call out his name, you are reminding him of the, of the promises that rest upon your life. Hallelujah. And then the last part of this verse, it says, whoever calls out the name of the Lord shall be saved. And salvation is like a package. Hallelujah. It includes your forgiveness. It includes your deliverance. It includes your healing, your protection, your preservation. And when you pray this morning, and when you call out the name of the Lord, be assured that you shall receive salvation in all of his form. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice wherever you are and start calling out the name start calling out the name start calling out the name that is above every other name start calling out the name of the Lord the name of the Lord 
We're calling out your name, Lord. We're calling out your name. 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 The name that which above any other name, the name that which above any other name, and the name that is above any other name, above sickness, above depression, above fear. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! There is no other name by which we can be saved. But the name of Jesus, but the name of Jesus, there is power in your name. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. We're calling out your name this morning, God. We're calling out your name this morning. Radababa. Over every situation. Over every situation, God, that we are facing. We are calling out your name. We are calling out your name. Waymaker, we're calling on you. Waymaker, we're calling on you. You make a way where there is no way. You make a way where there is no way. We're calling out your name. We're calling out your name. Radabashikatayabasete. We're calling out your name, oh God. Radaboshatayababa. Rikadebashetayababa. Radeboshatayababa. Ekadebababa. Ondaraba. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ekatemande bababa. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We calling out your name. We calling out your name this morning. Radabashikara bababa. Jehovah Shalom, the one who gives us peace, the one who gives us peace, God, in the midst of this situation, hallelujah, we don't know which way to turn, we don't know which way to turn, but we are calling out your name, we are calling out your name, hallelujah, we are calling out your name, we are calling out your name, Reliable God, reliable God, reliable God. Reza bashita ya baba ba. Hekada, we calling on you, God. We calling on you, God. Reza bashita ya basete. We calling out your name, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We calling out your name. Shata raba sita ya nabashita. Renda bashete araba sukata baba haramand. And as we call out your name, God, let hope rise. As we call out your name, God, let faith rise. We are reminding you of your promises of our lives, God. You do not lie. You do not fail, God. Whatever you say, we come to pass. We believe it, oh God. In the Rabashita Yabas, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen, Amen, Hallelujah. And I also want us to pray for one more thing. You know, uh, the school year is starting tomorrow. Our kids are going back to school, and you know, uh, wherever they are at school, we are not there with them, and there are there's so many realities. And we are going to pray and surrender our kids, the kids of this church, unto the, ne- the hands of the Lord, that the Lord may give protection and that the Lord may be with them wherever they are. Let's lift up, let's lift up our voices and pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, we surrender our kids onto your hands, God. Hallelujah. We pray for protection, Lord. 
We pray for protection over our kids, Lord, as they are going back to school tomorrow, Lord Almighty. That Father, you may cover them with your blood, God, that they might not that they, they might be, Lord, invisible, God, to the enemy. That Lord, you might order their steps, Father, that you will give them um, in intelligence, God, that you will give them wisdom, Lord, as they are carrying out this new year, Father. That, Lord, you will supply all their needs. That, God Almighty, that they will not be influenced by anything, God, hallelujah, surrounding them, but that they might be people of impact, God. Yes, that our children may be the light, God. That they might be the light wherever you plant them, Father. Thank you for covering them. Thank you for protecting protecting for, for, for protecting them God thank you for being with them father we surrender our babies onto your hands in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen and amen and amen amen glory to Jesus can we once again give it up for Jesus amen how are you guys feeling cold? I know it's cold today. I uh, just want you to stand. And you know how we do it at ECT. We try to be familiar with, you know, uh, to ask for names, to check if your neighbor is good. And if you're sitting next to somebody that you know, just switch off. And yes, you can give a hug. It's allowed in this church. And yeah. You can go ahead, greet like even five, ten, I don't know, six. appreciate the presence of Jesus in this place and give a shout to the Lord. Amen, amen. I know we have online as people. Yeah, wait, wait for a second. I know there are some people watching us online. Can we just, where is the main camera? I want us to wave at the people who are watching us online. The, in the middle. Oh, no, they can't see us. Okay, let me wave for you guys. Guys, you are welcome in God's presence and we love you. They couldn't see you, but yeah, all our onlineers, we, are, we love you and we are happy that you, are, you decided to join us this morning. Amen. We may have your seat, please. What a blessing this morning to have you guys at church. Uh, don't worry, I will not be preaching. Uh, the one who comes after me... Um, <laughs> she's something. <laughs> she's something. But I wanted just to, before uh, I, w I received the, um, the preacher, to, um, to introduce to you the new couple in church. They got married yesterday, no, on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Irene and Dieu merci. Yeah. They look so lovely. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I saw Irene, she was not smiling before the wedding. I don't know what you gave her. <laughs> but this morning I greet her there, she was smiling a lot. But even the guy, the look has just completely changed, you know. Can we once more just, you know, celebrate them again? You may have your seat. It's a serious message to all the single people. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Check if there is a single person next to you. Just ask him one question. What are you waiting for? Uh, he should tell you. <laughs> okay. Or you should ask for the status. Like, where, where is the status? Complicated? Like in transition? Ready to get married or, no, or what? Uh, <laughs> you know those status on social media that, you know, like somebody is saying, like, complicated. But anyway, um, I don't want to waste a lot of time. She's a friend of mine. She became a family and she, 
She's really yeah, one of the person that uh, I honor and respect. I got to know her. She was, um, she was planning for an event. And it was one of the biggest events that I've ever seen. Like one person pulling a lot of people together. And so since then, I actually went to greet her. And I told her that I want to be your friend. So she accepted. And she was like, okay, good, cool. She was smiling, and I, I couldn't imagine how she was smiling now to all the person that was there. So then she became my good friend, and now she's, uh, she's a doctor. You know, uh, it's such a blessing to see somebody working very busy, and at the same time pursue, pursuing her passion for God, for ministry. And it's such a pleasure, privilege, and honor to introduce to you the new doctor, our preacher of this morning, I promise that I will teach her. Mamanika, she comes. Isiti, can we honor her? Yeah. She's such a powerhouse. Sometimes I get upset too, but um, rather get upset at the devil than any human being, right? How has your week been, everybody? Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Can you clap for yourself for being here this morning? And I don't mean it simply because it's a thing we do in church, uh, being alive and being able to make it every morning, get up, look as good as you're looking. It's really a blessing nowadays, right? Yesterday I was scrolling after connection finally came back. Did, did somebody have an issue with that whole connection thing? Did you realize just how addicted you are to the internet? Because I did. <laughs> And so whenever the internet came back up, I realized that uh, I was scro scrolling through Facebook and somebody posted something about a young boy who had just finished his um, uh, ex examen d'état, finished high school, high marks, 75%. And while he was celebrating in the house with his mom, he got shot. Not intentionally, there was a shooting outside because they wanted to disperse a crowd outside of his house, and he's the only person who got a bullet while he was inside the house. So that just gave me a quick reminder of the fact that it's not a simple thing to be alive. It's not a simple thing to have the opportunity to reach the age that I have, the, the age that you have, and to have everything going for you, to have your limbs and the movement. So when we're clapping for being here this morning, can we really clap uh, as people who have been granted the opportunity to be alive? It's a grace, it's an opportunity, not to be taken for granted. God allowed you to be here intentionally. He deserves this praise. He's a mighty God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for bringing us into your presence. As I said, I do not take it for granted, and I don't believe any one of my brothers and sisters in this place does. We believe that you are God and you love us and there's something particular that you want to tell us this morning. I'm your humble vessel. Use me the way you want to, Holy Spirit. Throw your weight around and do what you got to do for somebody that came here this morning expecting something particular coming from you. We thank you in advance for everything that you'll do and the way you'll feed us. In the name of Jesus, I prayed. Amen. Who was here this week during our services on Wednesday? and Thursday by show of hand. Only a few. Can I invite everybody else to just show up? It's here. It's free. <laughs> and it's only an hour and a half. So by the time you're struggling with traffic to try to get home, service has started and finished. Isn't it? And we pushed it back to 6, six o'clock, actually. So on Wednesdays, we meet here for Bible study from 6 uh, p.m. to 7.30. And for intercession, time of fulfillment, we do it on Thursday from 6 to 7.30 as well. And trust me, trust me, Pastor Freddy offered us a very special show on Wednesday. Y'all missed a lot. 
I don't know if somebody was blessed on Wednesday, because I was. Ah, you can clap, it's all right. <laughs> we were definitely blessed because we learned how to read the word of God, which is very important. And on Thursday, we had some powerful moments in the presence of the Lord. So I invite you to come and I invite you to invite somebody. This is the only type of party where you get power, you get fed, and you're allowed to bring as many people as you want, right? So it's okay. And so this morning, we're going to be doing our reading in the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 14. If you're there, say, I'm there. I'm hearing three people. <laughs> Just as a reminder... The book of John is in the New Testament, <laughs> just so you don't get lost. Are we there? All right, Busha, I'll start reading. After this, Jesus crossed, crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as, a healed, as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed the hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him, turning to to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Somebody says he already knew what he was going to do. Not, none of your situations surprise him. He always knows what he's doing, just in case you forgot. And you were saying, have you forgotten about me? Where are you? We said that on Thursday, right? He's never lost. He's omnipresent. So he never abandons you. And he always knows what he's doing. Verse 7, Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? It's funny, allow me to pause at this point, right? Philip is being tested. A question is asked to him by a person he's seen perform miracles before. And he's saying, with such a big crowd, it's impossible for us to feed them even if you, we work for an entire year. I always wonder how we do that. How from one moment to the next, we just forget that we worked with somebody who performed miracles, Matter of fact, the very first miracle they experienced from Jesus was him transforming what? Water into wine, right? So you walk with somebody who's just doing that at the drop of the hat without trying to make any effort. And when he's telling you, how are we going to feed these people? What can we do? You keep giving him answers like he can't do nothing. But that's a story for another day. Those who know me know I do that all the time. Verse 8, then Andrew, Simon uh, Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Yet again, they still don't understand. 10, tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. Then, alone, uh, then men alone numbered about 5,000. And this is very specific because at the time, you know, they only counted men, right? So if they're counting 5,000 men, they're not counting children, they're not counting women. It means that that number can easily be doubled, right? Because demographically speaking, there's more women than men, and there's more children than there are men. So you can easily double that number. So we can easily say that there were 15,000 people, more or less, there that needed to be fed. Now, I understand, hum humanly speaking, the disciples saying, we have 15,000 people in a place where there isn't enough food for that kind of people, and you want us to feed them. Verse 11, then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. 
afterward, he did the same with the fish. And then all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers. So 